So watch, let's watch this. This is uh, Bitcoin News sent Jordan Herbs to El Salvador's largest gathering of Bitcoiners to find out what motivates them to be part of this revolution. So this is part one, three minutes long, but has some really good um, information and really good just like, uh, you'll see, you'll see. Here we go. What came from gold with central banks and essentially like political currency tokens, dollars. How can companies be reporting earnings when they're closed? I didn't know anything about money, you know, the economy until I learned Bitcoin. Then I'm like, oh, shit, that opened my eyes. Some people just think it's about making money. We got to make changes sure. so that humanity has a future. If they're willing to sit down with a Bitcoin and talk for one hour, they'll see we are radical because we are at war with evil. They kept printing billions of dollars every single day. That was the moment where it finally clicked. We're not stopping this thing of printing money. We are never going to pay off our debts. It'll only grow bigger and bigger and larger until we go through hyperinflation. It's unfair that there's a couple people, leads, that have the, the capacity to steal your energy. And all this misusage has allowed countries to create war. We are right now fighting the most important revolution ever in mankind's history. We are moving monetary energy, economical energy, from something that essentially is funding evil. It's funding fake media. It's funding the military industrial complex. It's funding big pharma. Even people who are not Bitcoiners seem to know that money printing fiat is imprisoning people. It's a tool for control of people. When you're living in the, the rat race, that nine to five, your mind kind of shuts down and it closes on only what you can do right now. And when you're here and you're with Bitcoiners, it starts to open back up again. You get that creativity back and you see what's possible. And that's what Bitcoin is allowing us to have. It's engineered money. It's the first thing that was designed to be a money. And so now that you have this global decentralized monetary protocol, that nobody can violate or confiscate. We're talking about the solution to the human race and you're talking about the what's one problem in the world, that's the that's the money problem. Because if you know how money works, it doesn't work. In 2020, if you had a dollar, now it's 75 cents. Bitcoin has that 21 million cap and that was the switch that makes so much sense to me. Most Bitcoiners, they have one mission in mind, the promise of a better future. You no know, printing fiat just because you feel like it from a situation that you created, that is over. So Bitcoin is always that that glue that brings everybody together no matter what language you speak you're always just like going at it like i'm pitching myself brother to be here this is history in real time it, it is definitely brings out a meaning of a peaceful revolution freedom from tyranny i'm shorting the dollar and defunding evil because central banking is evil the huge thing is trying to find out what is possible with bitcoin and what's possible with our lives we're going to push these limits further than we've ever seen and that comes from Bitcoin, right? The, the freedom that it's given to us. And once you realize how the system works against you, there's no going back to the system. And you will, if they teach it to kids, they will teach their parents and their grandparents. All of us have been given a gift to have entered this industry early. And we are going to be asked to be responsible for the gift that we've been given. What are the spheres of influence that we're all called to bless? Whatever it takes to make the changes we need, because we can't, it's unsustainable the way things are going. It's about the people. We are connecting extremely fast because we want the good things for each other. How good was that? <clears throat> that was very well done. Big shout out to Bitcoin News for putting that together. It said Swan at the top there, but I think it was Bitcoin News who did it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Very, very good breakdown of, of Bitcoiners, what we're here for, what we're doing. And a couple things I saw there and noticed. I took some notes here. Uh, but I got five things here from that that I wrote down. I watched that earlier this morning and I kind of thought the same thing. But five things. And I think that if... If the majority of people really understood the mission here and what Bitcoiners were actually doing versus what the news tells them that we're doing, five things here. So the one problem in the world is our money. Everything comes back to money. Every issue in the world, the core problem with that is the money. 
when you give a small group of people the ability to print money, society collapses. And that's what we're living through right now. So that, that's what a lot of people miss is the one problem causing all of these issues is the money. And the second part of that is Bitcoiners, when you when you start talking with a Bitcoiner, it doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter what country you're from. Everybody understands the mission here. Everybody is working towards the same goal. So languages are completely irrelevant. Everybody's working together on this. The third one here is central banking is evil. Central banking is evil. I know we've spent our whole life living in this system and we never really knew what the central banks were until the last couple of years for me anyways, but central banking is evil. We need to start, whenever we say central banking, we have to drive that point home. Central banking is evil. And there's no going back. I can't speak for everybody here, but for me personally, I'm going down with this ship. I am. And I've told that to some very close people in my life as of late. Because whenever there's certainty or uncertainty within things, people always have their doubts. People always ask questions. What if this? What if this? What if it fails? What if all this stuff happens? I'm telling you, I'm never going back to that system. Whatever that takes, if I have to pack up and move to a country who's more friendly than this place is, who's living on a Bitcoin standard like El Salvador is, I'll do it. I'm never going back to that system because it's complete bullshit. And the last thing here is that the world, the system that we're going through right now that we're living in is unsustainable. Debt-based fiat currency is unsustainable. And every time throughout history, every time there's been a fiat currency introduced into the world, it's failed because it's unsustainable. And so when you realize that, when you fully comprehend that, you have to figure out what's next. CBDCs, they're going to try. Centralized, they're going to continue this path of centralization. And I think that that's what would have happened without Bitcoin. But thank God we have Bitcoin. A couple things in the Zapdot stream here. I got to refresh so I can see the names of these. <clears throat> so, hey, crypto, Zapped a thousand sats. Thank you. Thank you. It says, first time watching something on Zapdot stream. I found you on YouTube, saw you were live. One thing led to another, and now I'm discovering that there are streams on Noster aware platforms. There you go. I love that. Thank you for the sats. Thank you for that comment. And it's nice to have you on Zapdot stream. I honestly think that once people move from this centralized world, like YouTube, with centralized servers, into a platform like Zapdot Stream, which is much more friendly to freedom, I guess you'd say, they're never going back, ever. I'm not going to go from Nostra to Twitter. I'm not going to go from YouTube or from Zapdot Stream back to uh, YouTube. It's just not going to happen. Never going back there. So let's... Uh, Let's continue this on here because we're not done yet. We're not 